This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar on multicam editing in Apple Final Cut Pro 10. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this excerpt, I'll show you how to edit and trim a multicam clip. So now we're ready to edit. There's our multicam project. And let's go to the eye stance. Select the entire clip, edit it down to the timeline. And there is, notice that I'm seeing that monitor angle, and I'm hearing the audio that's coming from that monitor angle. Now, you can't hear it, and I've turned the audio off here, because multicam editing focuses on the video more than the audio. We'll talk more about that in a second. But now we're ready to edit. So how do we do that? Well, I'm going to hide the browser, Control, Command, 1. I'm going to hide the inspector, Command, 4. And I'm going to go to View, In Viewer, angles, which as a menu choice I never use because enabling multicam editing is shift command seven. And this opens up what's called the angle editor. The angle editor shows each of the individual clips that's inside the timeline as a separate image in its own little window inside Final Cut. Now here I have a block of four clips. I could have nine clips or 12 clips. The way this works is, see the setting. You can say, just show me two angles. You show two of the four cameras. That's one row of one. Or two rows of two, which gives me four. Or three rows of three, which gives me nine. Or four rows of four, which gives me 16. So I could see all 16 angles at the same time. And because I can edit up to 64 angles, we create what are called banks. That's that little icon down here. Let me go back to two. Here I have two banks, cameras one and two, and click on it, cameras three and four. So you could do a pass and do, say, the first six cameras. Then switch to the other bank and do a pass and do remaining cameras. We can also do a keyboard shortcut that allows us to do bank switching, shift option semicolon, and shift option apostrophe. Shift colon apostrophe, and shift colon semicolon switches between banks. And the reason you would switch between banks is if you have more cameras than you can easily see at a time, do the first bank on pass one, go back and do the second bank on pass two. The other thing that we can do, let's go back to four angles so I can see everything. Notice I'm displaying time code here. You can turn off time code by going to the overlays and unchecking it if you don't need to see it. And you can also display the angle name, the clip name, or display none if you prefer not to look at it at all. You have control over all of this inside the settings menu. Now notice that I've got a gold box here. The gold box indicates that I'm editing audio and video at the same time. And almost never do we do that. If you think of a typical multicam recording, I'm recording a band on stage. The audio front of house is recording all those separate channels for an audio mix that's going to happen separately. And they're feeding a stereo pair to me, so I've got reference audio on all of my cameras. So most of the time, I'm taking either a stereo feed from the board or I'm just simply recording ambient sound on all the cameras because I don't use multicam to create a multi-channel audio mix. I'm using multicam to create a multi-camera video cut. So virtually all the multicams that I shoot, I've got a, the same audio on all the cameras. Otherwise, I can't get them to sync. So I want to say, where's my audio coming from? I select the audio waveform, and I say, I'm going to take the audio from this camera. Notice the green box. That means where the audio is coming from. Then I'm going to click on the video box, and I'm going to say, I'm going to start with this shot. My audio is now coming from here, and my video is going to start with the blue box and what's going to happen is they're going to start to skate forward. And then I'm going to cut to camera two. And we're going to pick up a close up and just work. I'm just going to do the first 10 seconds. Skate, and I'm watching. And here they come. And they're skating forward. And they miss it. And we go back to 
the wide shot. All I'm doing is because I've switched this to blue, I simply watch on my, my little monitors here and I cut from one shot to another to give me the cut that I want on here. I can't do transitions, I can't do dissolves, I can't do wipes, I have to add those later. The purpose of this is simply to do a cut. Well, that's easy. You just simply go through here and do cut, 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 until you're done. It's really, really fast, very, very efficient. And if you're like me, you screw it up. <laughs> so how do you fix it? You select the trim tool, click hold and drag, and now I can do a roll trim to find the precise point where I want to have that edit occur. And then I realize, Larry, you idiot, you're cutting from wide shot to a wide shot. You tell your students you should never cut wide shot to wide shot. You want to have it be tighter than that. So what do I replace this with? Well, if I put my playhead here and select a different shot, notice how it automatically forces an edit point and changes the downstream shot. Ta-da! Brilliant. But if I put my playhead in the middle of the shot and hold the Option key down and click on the shot that I want to replace, it does a Replace Edit. So now, that's the wrong shot. Let's replace it with this shot right here, Option Click. Option Click does a Replace Edit. If you put the playhead where you want the edit to occur, notice I've paused it right here. This is where I want the edit to occur, and I want to cut to this nice close-up. I'm not playing. Click on it. It automatically cuts and changes the downstream shot. Or I can hit the space bar and play it and just cut as much as I want in real time, and it automatically puts a cut in that place. Or hold the Option key down, and you can then replace the shot where you option click. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar looking at multicam editing inside Apple Final Cut Pro 10. For the complete version of this training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 264. By the way, membership is a great value when you need to stretch your training dollars. Membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only nineteen ninety nine. That's more than 1,900 movies, hundreds of hours, on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it multiple times each month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.